a large model showman's engine and this one is part 26 making the right hand side motion guard side plate and just in case you want to know how to make the left hand side motion guard side plate it's identical to making this one but at the other side I cut the first of the side plates to fit as you see here and I cut out part of the curved bit at the front to clear the operating lever that opens and closes the drain cocks. In the last episode I showed how I created the curves on both of the side plates using my small set of bending rollers. I mentioned in the previous episode how important it was to make sure that the piece of brass sheet was fed into the bending rollers squarely. If it had bent the piece of sheet brass at an angle it would be no good at all. Using my original cardboard template I laid it on the piece of brass sheet to mark out the part that I need to cut out. And I also marked the overall length, more about that in a minute. Using my metal cutting bandsaw, this is what I did to the brass sheet. The cutout was a bit rough, so I cleaned it up on my one inch belt sander. It's very important not to have any sharp edges. And I made doubly sure that there weren't any by using some emery cloth, as shown in this clip. And now it's time to cut the side plate to the correct length, and I was a bit nervous about doing this. Even though my cardboard cutout template was a bit on the rough side, it was at least accurate. After cutting the side plate to length and cleaning it up, it fitted perfectly. In this clip, I'm holding it in the correct position because it's not fastened to anything yet, and I'm marking out the position to cut a slot to clear the check valve. And once again, I more or less followed my cardboard template. And it was a very strange coincidence that the slot that I'm cutting out in the side plate is exactly the same width as the width of my ruler. And once again, using my old bandsaw, I cut a rectangular hole to clear the check valve. This part is important. It can't really be square either. It doesn't look good and it's not very good from a mechanical point of view. These are special check valves because they have a tap on the top to allow you to isolate them in case the ball valve springs a leak. This is a really good idea and it's quite similar to the valve I fitted to the top of a check valve on my 5 inch gauge Stirling single locomotive. A while back a good friend of mine who has an engineering company gave me some pieces of brass and stainless steel so I thought I would treat the vice top to some really nice angled pieces of brass and this allows me to clamp things in the vice without marking them and I certainly do not want to mark these end plates. There are several ways I could have arrived at this slot in the side plate. I could have removed the machine vise and the rotary table from my small milling machine, clamp this down to a piece of wood, and use a milling cutter to cut out the slot. Alternatively, I could have used a hole cutter to first of all cut a hole in the metal plate, and then cut out the rest using the bandsaw. No, I thought I'd do it this way. I used the bandsaw for everything, it was a much quicker way of doing it. And when I got to the round part, I just kept nibbling away at it with the bandsaw. And now all I have to do is just file the slot to the correct shape using a combination of flat files and a half round file. When filing or cutting brass components, you always need to use sharp tools, and this includes files. After a while, I removed this part from the vise and tried it in position on the engine, and I felt that it needed a minor adjustment, so the felt tip pen mark at the top is where I'm going to file down to. I will of course turn the piece of brass sheet upside down before I start filing the other side. Filing a piece of brass sheet of this thickness is a very easy job. Whenever I'm filing like this, I think back to the time when I made my seven and a quarter inch gauge titch locomotive, and I made the frames out of quarter inch steel plate just to give it more weight and more tractive effort. And I do remember just how difficult it was to file the axle box slot square when both of the pieces of metal were bolted together. That's half an inch of steel. It made me very hot indeed. And compared to that, this job is like a walk in the park. And here's the progress so far on the right hand side plate. Until it's fixed in position, it's quite difficult to hold it perfectly level, but you get the idea. I intend to fit brass edging to these side plates and on the right hand side plate the bottom part is going to be very easy. Time now to bend one of the pieces of trim to match the side plate and this needs to be bent very accurately. 
it's not going to be exactly the same bend as with the side plates, it needs to be slightly larger, so that it fits neatly on the outside edge of the plate. If I bent this piece of trim to exactly the same radius as the side plate, it wouldn't fit properly. So I'm attempting to bend it just very slightly less. And please note, it is also very important to make sure that the part that you're bending is perfectly in line with the rollers for it to look OK. To finish this job, there are a couple more things to do. I need to hold the piece of trim firmly against the side plate, mark it out and cut it to length. And now, when I try the trim on the side plate, it's not bad, it just needs a little bit of tweaking. Please note, you do need to use an absolute minimum of ultraviolence on this job. In the next episode, I'll be finishing this side plate and bolting it to the engine. In this clip, the side plate is sat loosely in position and it's a bit down at the front. That's why the gap for the check valve looks like it's wrong, but it isn't. All will be revealed in the next episode, but that's it for this one. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.